As well, Mr. Consultant, I know you guys like to boil things down to short three word bursts. He says, let me give you one. It's leadership, stupid. Bill Catlett, co-author of the critically acclaimed book, Contented Cows Give Better Milk, speaks to management audiences about the bottom line benefits of having a capably led, focused and fired up workforce. The organizations that are employers of choice they know what they stand for. They know what's important. They know what it takes to be successful there. Fasten your seatbelt. Bill Catlett brings his vast experience and passion to make audiences sit up and take notice. In an age when speed, flexibility, and flawless execution have become the critical success factors for a business, and they have. You can't get there without doing the kinds of things that make your organization an employer of choice, period. Motivated people move faster. People want meaningful work, work they can be proud of. They want suitable challenge and the freedom to pursue it. They want to be in the game, not on the bench. You can do that in your business. There are a few simple things that these companies are doing religiously. And the things that I'm going to suggest that you have to do day in and day out if you really want to extract the discretionary energy that resides within your workforce. What we did was, we, we, just to keep our facts straight, we looked at each company's financials over a 10-year period from 1986 through 1995, as reported by Moody. So if you don't believe what I'm putting up here, you can check it yourself. The companies we identified as contented cows outgrew their, their counterparts by a margin of four to one. They were anywhere from two to five times as productive. They out-earned them by 40 billion US over the 10-year period. Generated a lot more jobs and a lot more wealth for shareholders. And, and, and I think another point of reality is that employers of choice have at their bedrock this notion that sensible employee relations practices are what matters with, and I'll underscore the term sensible, because there's too many people out there trying to do all kinds of goofy stuff to hire, retrain, supposedly motivate people. In fact, if you saw yesterday's USA Today cover article right at the very top, that's exactly what it was about, about all the you know, the, the, the pet insurance, and there's no rules, and people can do this and do that, and, and the fact that it hasn't worked, and no, it's not going to work. Think about every single major achievement in the, in the history of mankind. And I'd be willing to bet that, that you can find that there was some, some serious, big-time commitment on the part of one or more people. To wit, Chris Columbus, you know, had plenty of good reasons to say, you know, these maps ain't very good. I think I'll wait until we get some better ones. <laughs> Alan Shepard might have said, you know, hey, why don't we send some more monkeys up before I strap my butt to this relatively untested rocket? And to be sure, Martin Luther King Jr. had plenty of good reasons not to go to Selma, Alabama. But in every single one of these cases, these folks were seriously committed. Capital C. And, and every day, a lot of us wimp out. We throw our hands in the air and we say, oh, all the good people have jobs already. How is it, then, that a company like Marriott, it feels weird saying this in the Holiday Inn, but too bad it's true. Um, Company like Marriott, whose jobs don't exactly have world-class excitement factor, manages to get 150,000 people to show up every day, answer the phones, check you in, clean your rooms, do all that stuff very well, and by the way, be unfailingly polite in the process. I'll submit it has a lot to do with Bill Marriott's 12 rules of su for success, the ninth of which says, you know, it's more important to hire people with the right qualities than with specific work experience. Round pegs, round holes. When I was at FedEx, we were besieged all the time with questions from applicants about why can't we wear a beard? 
It was mainly the males that made that request, but <laughs> I mean, each time we'd patiently tell us, you can wear a beard, you just can't do it and work here. Um, the reason being that, that in thousands of customer focus group sessions, our customers had told us that they really preferred the clean cut look of our people, our equipment, and everything else, and, and the way we saw it, as much money as they were paying to do business with us, that's probably the least we can do. I mean, there's a huge difference between having a mission statement and a bunch of t-shirts and plaques and banners and stuff with all that junk on it and having a credible sense of mission that people really buy into. Most of us spend entirely too much time trying to get the, the words just right. Nowhere near enough time trying to make sure people under, really understand it. And in the spirit of fairness, here's one where, where my alma mater, FedEx, screwed up. In the winter of 1982, the senior leadership team went off to some mountaintop retreat accompanied by a high-paid consultant to figure out where they wanted to take the company in the years ahead. Well, that's fine. You've got to do that. But when they came back down off the mountain several days later, here they came with real stone tablets, looked just like that, with the, the newly minted mission statement carved into it. And we made sure that all then 60-some thousand employees got one of these rocks. And we said, OK, our job's done. We've done this, this mission thing. Never mind the fact that a bunch of our employees couldn't even pronounce some of the words on this thing. And I can assure you, as, we, as we're here, you know, 20 years later, nobody cares and nobody remembers. It's another company, it's a client of ours, taking a little bit of a different tack. It's an outfit called, uh, called Chick-fil-A. They put this a little bit more simply. <laughs> now, I want, want you to pretend you're at your, at your eye doctor, okay? You're getting your annual eye exam. You tell me which is clearer, slide A or slide B. Recently, I conducted a, a seminar at the Marriott Suites Hotel outside of Dulles Airport. About an hour and a half before the, the seminar, I went downstairs to, to the meeting room to check it out. I walk in, and we got problems. The AV stuff is supposed to be there, is not there. The room setup is wrong. By the way, it was my fault, not theirs. I immediately start looking for somebody you know, a meeting coordinator type person to, to help me out. And I only see one human being in view, and it's a it's lady at the end of the hall serving coffee and breakfast rolls. She noticed me right away. She came over. She says, how can I help? And I said, explained to her, you know, my, my problem, and frankly, didn't have a lot of hope. I mean, she's a waitress, for crying out loud. She says, and with a, with a looked me right in the eye, with a voice that told me she meant business. She says, no problem. I said, no, you don't understand. I mean, I've got to go back to my guest room, change clothes, come back here in about an hour, and this needs to be done. She hands me her business card. Says, sir, go on to your room, do what you have to do, come on back, it'll be taken care of. An hour later, I come back. Is dead perfect. Later on at the break, I, I, I sought out my new friend, Annie. I said, you know, how is it that a banquet server comes to, to deal with AV equipment and room setup and yo-yos like me? She says, sir, these, these meeting rooms are my responsibility. I make sure my customers have what they need. Put that in a bottle and sell it.